right, we're going to start this project. Now, this is something completely different for me. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I may trash the whole project in the video. But we are going to give it a shot. Now, I am going to try and paint a similar vision of this. Now, this is a photograph that I took when we went on a cruise about 11 years ago. Um, it was in Antigua. And on our excursion, the bus stopped at the top of a hill, and we could look down into this cove. And it just was beautiful. So it's one of my favorite photographs, and I have several hanging in our bedroom because uh, it was such a relaxing time. If you ever get a chance to take a cruise, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you're going to go to the Caribbean, I recommend going in the spring because as it gets later in the summer, it gets closer to hurricane season, so the winds are a little more rough, um, so or the waters are a little more rough. So go in the spring if you can that is the best time to go we just had a fabulous time we've been to the bahamas a couple times but this is the only cruise we've taken enjoyed every single minute of it so i am going to try to replicate this a little bit i'm not going to put all these little boats down in here we'll put a few uh, i'm not going to put all these houses on the hillside i think i will make it a little bit different uh, maybe like um, tuscan farm hills and um, we're just going to try and get this as close to this photo that I took as possible. So I've got an 11 by 14 canvas. I've kind of sketched out my design on here, which is not something I normally do. Normally I paint the background and then I put my pattern on here. So this is all completely different for me. So we want to tape off our horizon line here. We're going to do our sky first. I didn't cut my tape long enough. I'll try to line it up here. So our horizon line, keeping it straight, is very, very important. Um, I think I came down about a third of the way here. It's about three and a half inches, so from the top. So we are going to start by painting in the sky. I'm going to start with some baby blue here. I just, every time I think of the cruise and the good time that we had, it just brings back such wonderful memories. It's a big smile on my face. I just loved, I can't, I mean, I just loved every single minute of it. All right, I'm going to get a large flat brush. You can use a filbert brush, whatever kind of brush that you want to use to do the top here. Now, I did not do it, but I highly recommend when you are painting on a canvas, whether it's a canvas panel or a canvas itself, to very lightly sand the canvas um, with a brown paper sack is all you really need. And kind of get some of the rough off of it. And then after you apply your base coat, do it again. And that will give you a little bit more smoother surface if that's what you want. If you want the texture where the paint will drag and pull, then uh, don't do any of the sanding. It's just a little bit harder on your brushes when you have the um, the texture on there. So we're just going to base this. I make, need to make sure I press that down good. We'll come back and tape off the sky once it's done to do the water line. So this is just baby blue, a very simple base coating it on here. And I think I'm going to get some white and lighten that. It's pretty close to baby blue in the photograph, I think. And it's a little more, a little more brighter blue. So I'm gonna put a little white on my palette and maybe a little sapphire blue. We'll kind of mix it up here. So maybe I'll pick up just a side load of sapphire blue. Push that in. Some nice kind of color going on here. All the way down to our tape. this time because I want to keep it a little lighter here at the horizon. Blend that. Now you'll probably have to do it a, a couple of times to cover the canvas well. So I'm going to 
was going to kind of do a slip slab. I'm going to get some white. I'm going to put some white along the horizon here. I'm going to lighten that up right there next to our water line. Okay, I'm just going to do a slip slap because it's, it's going to push the paint into the canvas. So maybe I won't have to apply a second coat. I don't know that I'm going to do as many clouds as is on this particular photograph. But we will definitely be putting some in there. So there is our sky. I'm going to go ahead and a little bit more right in there. I'm going to go ahead and wash this brush out. Alright, I kind of got called away there for a second. My paint's probably dry. I'm going to spritz it with some water. Hopefully I will revive it. Um, I'm going to... I think I'll spritz a little water up here on the top. Now, I can tell how rough that is. Uh, I think I'll leave it rough until I get the clouds in, because I think that will help the brush to drag some paint on there. Now, I've got a super duper old Deerfoot brush, but you can use any kind of scruffy brush that you want to do, that you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and dampen it slightly. And put some water on my palette. Just spritz some on there. I'm going to pick up my Snow White and a tiny little dot. Teeny tiny little dot. There's just a little dot of blue on the very tip of that. Alright, let me wide angle back out. Okay, I'm just going to gently blend that. We're going to create some clouds in here. And these clouds are super fluffy, so I'm just going to start adding them in like this. Pick up a little water, some more paint. And just add some, some fluffy clouds in here. However you want them to look will be perfectly fine. I probably need a little bit bigger of a brush here. Leave some gaps. If you have another brush that you like to use to create clouds, then you just go right ahead and use that brush. I've got a little water in my brush now. I want to try and make this kind of fade away down here at the bottom. That's probably already dry, so I probably won't be able to fade that too much. So all of our clouds don't have to look super perfect here. I'm going to put a few up here. A little bit more water. my brush so I can kind of fade these a little bit. So it's just kind of a scrubbing in kind of thing. Now when you get closer to the horizon here, the clouds have less form so they're just going to have a little bit of something going on with them. moisture here. If I'd done this wet on wet, <laughs> it would have worked so much better. I probably should have just redampened, repainted the sky in so it would have been wet. Okay, so these will be more, you know, not so much shape to them because they are closer to the horizon and things on the horizon look smaller and have less form. And I've got quite a bit of water sprayed on here. I'm going to spray a little bit on this side. Load my brush with some white and a tiny dot of baby blue. Mix it in there. We'll add some more. Fluffy cloud. 
What's this? Wipe my brush off. A little bit of water. And we'll kind of fade this out down here. A little bit of faded clouds up here along the top edge. I think I need to come back here and add a little bit of some along that edge. Okay, we're going to fill in a little bit here. I'll add some highlighting on here. When they get dry, still got plenty of water on here, so that's good. Spritz it with some water that's going to help you make some nice clouds and they'll soften back in there very nicely. edge down here and put one more cloud shape in here and we can kind of let it kind of fade away there okay so those were some pretty easy clouds this one here definitely needs to be a little bit darker probably had too much water on there so I'll see if I can add some more Paint into that real quick. Okay, wash my brush out. Kind of soften some of these bottom edges. got these pretty bright when I did these, so i kind of soften them as best I can. They're probably completely dry, so. Alright, I think we got a nice bunch of clouds. We're going to come back and highlight them. They're not quite exactly like these by any means, but we're going to come back and highlight and do a little bit of uh, shading on the bottom of them, but we need to get them completely dry. I've got a dot there that's kind of weird. I had a splatter. Right, I'm getting a little blue to add to that. Tone that down. Okay, we will leave it there for now, I think. If I say that, then I do a little bit more. Crazy, huh? Okay, looking good. Looking good. Okay, that's a nice fluffy sky there. And a little brighter up there. Soften it. Okay, looks good. I'm going to get this dry this time. Well, I got it dry last time, but I really didn't want to. So if you are painting it, I highly recommend that you add the clouds while the paint is still damp. Um, if it starts drying, then just spritz it with water like I did and work your paint in. White and baby blue mixed together, there's no set amount. You can make it a little more on the blue side. You can make it a little more on the white side. We're going to come back and highlight and shade on these, so we'll really pop them out here. But... Um, that's how I want you to do your sky. Okay, let's brighten up the tops of our clouds. So I'm going to take that same brush, load it with some Snow White, and I'm going to start picking and choosing where we want our bright part of our clouds to be. Just by scrubbing this color on the same way that we did our clouds themselves. So 
So this is how you will give your clouds a little bit more form. Now you can tell which clouds are forward. Okay, and don't worry about where the white part stops because we're going to um, we are going to shade the bottom parts of our clouds. one. So if you don't like the shape that you put in there to begin with, this is how you can kind of change that shape. And I think this one needs to come out a little bit. Alright, let's go up here and get us a big fluffy one here. Just doing a circular motion. That's why you can use any brush that you want. Right, put a little bit down in here. Kind of scrub what's left in my brush down in here. too much paint doing these lower ones because they're going to stay more on the less visible side. This is looking pretty good. Put some bright lines up here. Now if you're doing a wrapped canvas, you'll definitely want to make sure you go around the edges a little bit. And there we go. So now we need to do some shading on these clouds. I think they're looking pretty good. Okay, we're going to start adding a little bit of shading on the bottom of the clouds here. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And what I want to do is dampen where I want to put some color. Now you can go with some sapphire blue, ultramarine blue, you know, baby blue if you want yours a little lighter. And dampen, pre-dampen, and then just scrub some of this color on the lower parts of the clouds here. And let me get a separate brush so I can dampen my clouds with it. So like this cloud in here I'll dampen and then maybe right there and I'll scrub a little bit. I'm using that same brush. Put a little bit more on this one I think. And this one needs to be brighter on the top for sure. So we'll come back and add a little bit more highlights in here. So this is how we're going to get a little bit of color on the bottom and I think that still needs to be darker. So I'm going to grab some black. Let's see if I have some out here on my table here. And I think... Or some gray. Either one of those will work. Uh, a dark gray. I want to 
put just a tiny bit, tinky, 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 tiny bit of black in here. I think I'll mix it with my sapphire blue. That's making a very nice cloudy gray color. So because you know you get a lot of rain. really dark on the camera. Doesn't quite look that dark in front of me. All right, I'm just going to take my damp brush and kind of blend that out. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, damp brush. Make sure you're using clean water when you're dampening stuff. And you need just a tiny bit of paint on your brush. And let it mix with that water and soften onto those clouds. There we go. Go ahead and put a little bit down here. I like that kind of grayish color. It reminds me of some clouds I saw the other day. Put some water in here. I've got just a very small amount of paint on my brush. I'm going to go over these a little bit because that's just a little bit too blue for me. Probably got too much water there now. And we'll come back and add some white in here to kind of take away the so much of the blue in there. Alright, so we're just going to do this all the way across. Just dampen a tiny bit of paint and scrub it on the bottom. Just the same way that you scrubbed on the top part with the white. But we will repeat the white because once you add the dark in here, sometimes you need to Rebrighten your brightest. Now see how we're giving those clouds some. Oops. And I'm not getting this brush damp when I go over to get my paint or anything because I'm putting water down here. I don't want I don't want uh, water in this because then it will just make everything just too. You won't notice it'll just kind of fade away in there. dried on my palette. Let's see if I can get it as gray as I had it there because I really like that gray. A little more blue. I'm going to take my damp brush and just try to oh, I that is, soften this edge down here. so much water right there that I've got a lot of water in my brush so I'm going to go tap it on my paper towel. Okay, a little bit up here on the bottoms and then we'll come down here with what's left in our brush and just, ooh, okay that's a little too dark down there. Add a little bit of white. These don't need much. They're pretty close to the horizon. 
but we still want to know they're there. Streak some across. Wash that brush out. I'm going to get as much of the water out as I can and pick up some white. This is still just using that Deerfoot brush. Okay, and we're going to tap in on the tops of our clouds here. Just kind of brighten up. A lot of this has gotten kind of pushed, pushed back with that when we added that darker color. Just blend it out with a damp brush. Don't, it's just paint. Don't stress out about it. A little more brightness up here. This one. Here we go. Creating some clouds. And they look pretty good, I think. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna right angle just a little bit so you can see the whole sky there. And if you feel like these have gotten if the underneath of your clouds is too dark, you don't like, you think they look stormy. Um, let me dry that, my drum brush off again. I just cleaned it out. You can tone them down with a little bit of the base color, which is baby blue. Let's get a little bit. And you can kind of scrub in there. just a scooch on any that you feel have gotten too dark on the bottoms. clouds I think. Bring that sky color back in there. Now you're going to be pretty rough with this brush. So if you've got, you know, you want to use an old scruffy brush. So if you've got something that's a uh, a little bit nicer and you don't want to damage it because you know the canvas is kind of a rough texture and then you're going to be scrubbing so if you don't want to be damaging your brush then you might want to you know use a different brush I think they're still a little bit dark so I think instead of scrubbing any more paint in there I'm going to create just a wash of some white. And just kind of wash.
wash them out a little bit on the bottoms. I like how they look, but my picture doesn't have them quite that dark. So I want to stay a little bit more true to the picture. Now, if I was just creating a design that was, you know, off the top of my head, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wash them out. So it's mostly water with just a little tiny bit of white paint mixed into it. You have to have the plenty of water in your brush in order to create, you know, get it on here because this canvas is going to suck it right up. Okay, I'm going to leave it where it's at. They're still a little bit darker than what I'd like, but I think it's going to be just fine for our sky. Okay, we're going to start working on the water next. Okay, I have taped off where my sky is because we're done with our sky. So let's um, work on the water. And right through here is, it's mostly from here. You can see a little bit of it down through here is some sand. So we're going to take some light buttermilk and we're going to put that in here. going to start from this this area and work our way out and this area here has our brightest colors in here our um, like Laguna green this new color Laguna and some turquoise blue maybe some teals in there so that's where we're going to start so I'm going to wash my brush out and pick up I'm going to start with that Laguna because I think it's it's the color that's closest here, and I want it to blend with that light buttermilk just a little bit because, you know, it makes it look like the water's coming up onto the sand. I'm going to move to a much bigger brush here in a second. I'm going to pick up both Laguna and Turquoise here. Maybe a little bit more Laguna. And we're going to start getting a little bit darker as we go out here. And I'm just going to gently blend those together right there. Go into turquoise blue. Now I am going to um, get a separate brush here. I want to dampen a little bit of my canvas. Not a whole lot, but a little bit on there. Go into my turquoise and work that in. And I want to get, I think I'm going to get my leaf green out because I want to put a little bit of greens in there. Now, I want to give you a tip here with my paint bottles because I know we all get those yucky things up underneath that. And sometimes I keep my bottles upside down like this when I've chosen my paints that I'm going to use. And sometimes when I open the bottle, the paint starts oozing out. But if you release the air, you know, unscrew it and let the air drop back down in there, then when you open it, you don't have the paint oozing out. I still get those little goober things, but makes a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this leaf green. I want some of this green in the water right through here. All right, I'm going to wipe my brush off and go to some turquoise blue, and we'll just blend those together. Make a nice... We can put a little bit of that green in here. Create some little darker areas in our water. We want to make sure everything softens out nicely towards this beach here. We don't want 
a bunch of hard lines. Although in my photograph, there is kind of a hard line where the water is the deepest out here. So I'm just going to side load into some turquoise blue. See on my brush, I've just got a little bit on my corner. And put a little bit of that green, that Laguna, on there. And I'm going to kind of create a, a water edge there. Picking up both Laguna and turquoise blue. Okay, I'm going to take a damp brush. And on this side of it, I'm just going to soften it just a little bit. And that's going to give us our water looking really deep right there. Deeper than what it is on the sand. Okay, we're going to come back and add a little white there in just a minute. We're going to continue with our turquoise and our laguna. The color of the ocean is so beautiful and it is just the clearest water you could ever imagine, in, in, at least in the Bahamas. Now I've never been to Hawaii, I'm not sure I could ride that long on an airplane. I'd have to really be knocked out to be flying that far over water, but <laughs> um, it's just the waters are just beautiful. I mean you just, you just want to stay there and enjoy the waters forever because they're just beautiful. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more of, I'm going to get some of the Laguna, put it through here, and I want a little bit lighter color, so I've got some teal mint out here, let's see how that looks. Good. All right, now I'm going to pick up my turquoise blue and blend those all together. This is like a little bit deeper area of the water according to the photograph that I took. It looks deeper right through here. So it's going to be a little bit darker. It's not quite as dark as what's over here along the water line, but there is some dark... Um, some stuff going on underneath the water down in here. So I'll put that in and then I'm just going to soften that hard edge out by tapping on both sides of that. Give a little bit of an illusion of something going on under the water down there. Now I did not pre-gesso this canvas or prime it or anything but I think if I was to do this project again <coughs> I would definitely um, either gesso it or uh, paint it with a couple of coats of white paint so that I'm not scrubbing so much into my paint, into my uh, canvas here. So I'm back with the, the turquoise here and I'm going to move to a much bigger brush I think. I'm going to go to a large, large brush here so I can cover more area. And I'm going to start going into some sapphire blue. So I'm going to pick up both turquoise and sapphire blue on my brush. And I'm going to start applying them. I'm going to get more of a darker blue out in here. I can add a little bit of white in there. Kind of streak some through. I'm going to go all the way up here. We're going to be covering all this edge here, so don't worry if this edge looks yucky, because it'll be covered. Okay, a little bit more of the, the blue and the turquoise blue. And maybe just a touch of white. I'll just put all three of those on my brush here. I'll go around this little island here. Off camera. And I'll we'll come over here and do this edge. Okay, I'm going to get some sapphire blue, maybe some baby blue this time. 
back here, let me wide angle just a scooch. Back here on the back is going to be a little bit lighter. So we're going to put the baby blue back there. It's almost reflecting the sky in the water there. We've got our tape there so we don't have to be too concerned about our... Okay, I've got some islands here. I'm just going to kind of go around them, sort of, so we kind of remember where they're at. But we don't have to, to remember where they're at. We can just come back in and add them later. I want to streak some, whew, or a lot of white. I want to streak some white through there. Create some highs and lows in the water. That's a lot of white there. Okay, let's finish out back on this edge. That's again just the sapphire and the baby blue. I'm going to let this dry because I have a feeling I'm going to have to apply a second coat because I think my canvas is going to be showing through in quite a few places here. Even though I'm trying to get that covered up, I don't know that I'm doing the best job of it. again. So I might just base coat our water in with some, uh, I could base it in with a little baby blue maybe. And then we can add our colors on top of that. Okay, let me get this dry. Okay, I'm going to start my second layer of paint here. And I lightly sanded this to kind of smooth it down a little bit. And I'm going to use more washes than I'm going to use heavy paint here. Um, I really wish I had undercoated this a little bit because it would have made a huge difference. Okay, I'm just going to go over my land mass here. And I think I will spritz some water on this help my paint move a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to pick up some turquoise blue. Put some of that in there. blue and Laguna here, but I think I'm going to go back to some sapphire. It's, that made it just a touch bright right there. Oops. Don't want that color back there. Once you get your back, back there done, just get out of it and leave it. Okay, so up here, we're going to go into some of our Laguna. A bit of our mint, a little bit of our leaf green here. Dampen it. I don't want my paint to move. A little bit more of the blue in there. Blend that green into that blue. That's that leaf green because we're creating a, a darker edge there next to the water and then we've got the same thing here a dark area here but in the center of the dark area is a, a very light color and then we've got 
got the bright right through here. So I'm going to put a little bit there and then I'm going to clean my brush off and just blend that out. So this area right through here, I'm going to get just a tiny little bit of light buttermilk and put that in there. some dark areas. There's some some darker areas also kind of under the water here so I'm going to use some of the um, sapphire blue and create these. And then right here there's one. I got one here. kind of go the same direction. This is a kind of a bigger one here. Okay, I'm going to wash this brush out. I really need to get this dry and then I want to create a wash of a color to go on right here. All right, I have removed my tape for my skyline there, and I think that looks pretty good. I haven't done anything extra to this yet. We still need to work on our water edge here, but I'm going to put out a little bit of light buttermilk and some camel. And we'll need some white here in a minute. When we clean my bottle top here, I've got some yucky yuckies here. I've got a really super old bottle of sand. And it's just making a mess everywhere. Got some gooby goobies in it. Okay, let's put a little bit of white out as well, because we're going to need that to kind of give the illusion of waves coming up onto our beach here. Spritz your palette with some water. I'm working on a second camera so that I can always have my palette on the screen as well. So, Okay, I'm just going to take a round brush here because I just want to kind of line our uh, landline here. So I'm going to take some of my bleach sand, get the water out of my brush here, and mix some uh, camel with it to get a, a little bit, a little bit lighter. I don't want it quite as white as what it was, but I don't want it as dark as that either. So I'm going to go to a much lighter value of this bleach sand. I mean, really light. Okay, you can kind of see the gradual movement of the color there. I think that will be a nice color. There's no right or wrong mixing here. You just mix your paint to where you get a nice light value of that bleach sand. And I want to put this along this landline here. bit more of the bleach sand. This needs to be a little bit darker. This is going to be a, a little bit more in the shadow over there. Back to my lighter color. Right through here. And now I just want to pick up just, I wiped the excess paint off my brush and we're just going to go with the, the light buttermilk. I kept calling it bleach sand, but it's not bleach sand, it's light buttermilk. So you're probably all yelling at me. See, I haven't been back to this project in over a week, so I'm surprised I remember what I'm doing. If it wasn't for the color photograph I have laying here. Okay, I'm going to bring a little bit of that still down. I think I want to put just a touch, I'm going to get a different brush, just a touch of this bleach sand into the water here. You know, so it's it's underneath the water. 
Okay. Just kind of smooth it out in there. We do want to get this dry. So let me dry it. I'll go off camera and do this. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, flat brush here and I'm going to get some Laguna out. Just a little bit. Or turquoise blue. It really is going to depend on uh, how you want your little Laguna to look. Because this, in this picture, it almost looks like it's a combination of the two colors here. So I think I will just dip into each color on the toe of my brush and then that turquoise can be a little bit overpowering and just gently mix them. Now I am going to create just a sheer little the sheerest of floats with this. So I've got water in my brush you can probably, let me zoom in, you can probably see how wet it is right there and I'm just going to continue to work this in my brush to keep it soft. I would rather go over it a couple of times as to get it too dark the first time and then rebase coat because that is never any fun. I'm going to turn this so it's this direction so I can pull towards me and I want to just create that might still be a little bit too much. I'm going to add a little bit more water in there. And I just Oh, get you on camera. I'm gonna create a little bit of movement on that sand. Very soft. Very, very soft. Don't try to don't try to let it take over and ooh, focus here. There we go. Don't let it try to take over that sand. You know, cover up your sand completely. You still want to see some of that sand through there. Now we're gonna pick up some white. Clean your brush, whatever brush you're using for floating. When I need really sharp, crisp edges, I like to go with a flat brush. So uh, with this step, we're going to create some uh, like waves, not waves, but you know how it, when it washes up on the beach, it brings this foam and, and these, these waves and things up on the beach. So that's what we're going to create next. Okay. bit of white here. Okay, so you get to be the judge of how your waves look. So you just want to bring some up and they can come out. You can put some up here. Make them a little bit brighter. Like up in here. We're just kind of doing a little float wiggle thing. That one's a little bit wide. So I'll just take my water and take that down. Work the paint into my brush a little bit more. And bring it up on the beach a little bit. So we're just going to create some, some little waves kind of going on here. This is kind of very sheer. And if you need to, just take the water brush and kind of take it back down in there. And that's how we're going to create the water kind of floating up there. And you can bring it out a little bit if you need to. You know, it's pushing in. I mean, this is a cove, so the water's going to push in here pretty good. Okay. I might do just a tiny bit more. Make it a little bit stronger. Right through here, right here. Okay, and then. If you want, you could always come in and darken underneath. Underneath, if you thought this was a big wave, you could put a little bit of a stronger color under there. Okay, now I'm going to take my round brush. And I'm just going to tap a little bit. You know, like some little foamy stuff going on here. It's really hard to tell when you're looking up close at it, how it looks. But when you get out a little bit farther, it's going to look completely different. Oop. Didn't quite, quite, 
came top. Didn't want quite that big of a an area there. Okay, so I'll zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. See how it looks kind of like the, the water coming in. Now this particular picture um, it looks like it has a little dock coming off of it. We could add that in. It's got a boat docked right beside it. So let's take a little tiny bit of burnt umber. Ah, get it open. And we'll just go ahead with our Laguna and mix them together. Make a kind of a muddy brown blue color. We'll add our Laguna. This one looks like it, or our Laguna. It's not Laguna. Well, it is Laguna. We're going to add our uh, little place where the boats are going to dock. So we're going to bring it out here in the water and up this way. Okay. I don't really know what a dock looks like. You know, you might have a, pick up a little bit of my green here. We might have a little bit of reflection underneath it. Don't really know. We're just going to give the illusion that one is there. Okay, now we'll take our white and let's dock a little boat right there at it. Yeah, this boat can be as big as you want it to be. It, you know, we're not going to see a whole lot of detail from, the, from where I was at up on the hill. You can't see a whole lot of detail. And then this one has boats scattered throughout. So let's just go ahead and scatter some boats. So we're just going to and they don't have to be much detail to them. You're just going to put little white lines here, and then we'll put some shadow underneath them. There's little boats and big boats and, and all different kinds of boats. One coming in here. You know, if you want to give it a little bit more shape, you can give it more shape. Um, a couple out here. a few more in here because there's quite a few in this picture and you can just kind of be the judge of how many boats you may not even want boats so if you don't want boats then don't put boats in your okay all right I'm gonna take some of that dark mix that I made that that uh, burnt umber and a little bit of Laguna and we'll just put a little shadow underneath these Really give them the, the look a little bit more of being in the water. And then if you want, if you feel like you want one to show a little bit more movement, you could put some waves, you know, around it. None of these, I'm too far away actually to even see it. So none of them, but let's say like this one is going out to sea. You could put some little waves kind of coming off the back of it. You know, that's, that's completely up to you. Whatever you want to do with your painting. There is no right or wrong. Just these boats were really just kind of sitting there. Okay, so there, let me wide angle out. I always think a wider angle gets a better perspective. So there we've got our boats on there. So we're going to work on this little land mass next, and then we'll work on all the rest of this here in a minute. Um, it's going to be like two separate areas because this is going to be like, um, you know, the shorter trees where buildings can be and stuff like that. And I think we'll put a couple of, of houses in here and uh, some hills. And then this is more like the tree tops, like we're looking. We are standing above this looking down. Okay, I've drawn my little land masses back in here. I'm going to get a little bit bigger round brush, I think. And um, I'm going to mix some Hauser Dark Green and some Burnt Ember and get a very dirty green. I am um, got way too much water in my brush, first of all. So there's my dark green, and here's my Burnt Ember. I just want a very dirty color of green. 
don't want it to be a bright green. Okay, and then we're just going to base our mass, our little land areas in here. These are just some little, probably just mostly rocky places that some of the places we went had a lot of rock on the beach, so it wasn't always able to get out to the water. Okay, I think I'm going to put a little bit of turquoise blue in that mix. here. We'll put some waves crashing up in here a little bit. So kind of make your, your uh, landmass, zoom in, a little bit irregular in color to give the illusion that um, things are growing here on this little island. You can add some, a little bit of white or some of the camel in here. Just, that's a little bit of camel, so we'll just kind of add that in there. Give some highs and lows in here. We just don't want it to be a solid color. So now we can do our other ones. And shape them however you want to shape them. the judge of your little islands here and how they look so just be happy with them they're very easy to create they're just background stuff we don't have to get too technical about them but we do want to make it look like water is kind of splashing on them a little bit so I'm going to take my white and I'm going to kind of tap some white along here I'm kind of coming off of it. I'm just tapping along the very bottom edge of where I put this this land. And we can bring a little bit out from it. This is not super noticeable. We're still very far away from this, but um, we do want it to look like we're getting a little splash on what's going on back here. And this will also help set our islands in the water. Okay, that's really all there is to the island. The, the, I keep calling it a little island, but um, that's really all it is to what's out there. <laughs> don't don't try to get too technical with it because it, it it's definitely background stuff. Just a little added extra interest to our painting. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm loving it. Okay, um, now let's um, work on this part of our land, and we're going to work on it up to about here, I think, because this is where this is where um, the trees, the tops of the trees, we start noticing more. You know, maybe a little bit more in here. So I am going to side load some of my sand. and some Hauser Dark Green just for this edge right here. For this edge right here so I can kind of blend that green into that. Kind of covered up my shape with the blue so this can all be green on this edge here and I'll come back and add some of that in there. But right in there we want a little bit of that kind of blending together. Um, so now all this area, and it's going to take a couple of coats because I am on a, um, I did not gesso this, so this is just a canvas straight out of the package. So I need my paint to really soak in there. So I'm just going to take some, 
some Hauser dark green and some burnt umber just to pick up randomly. And I'm going to go back to my great big brush. And I want to really work this into my canvas. So, get a little bit more burnt umber out here. This is, this is just our under coating of what we're doing here. Okay, so we've got to get something covering up all of this white canvas here. So if you are watching this video and haven't painted, you could certainly undercoat your, undercoat your whole canvas with the baby blue, I think is what we did up in the sky. Just base coat the whole canvas baby blue and then tape off for your sky. And then you won't need to um, do this. So our landmass, let's see, comes up here. This is just Hauser dark green and burnt umber. Another little hill thing coming up there. So I'll just do that. And I'm just going to kind of work this in and push this in to my canvas. Got something there. I don't want. And create my land shape. I still have something in my brush. blend that out like I did there. And I'm just going to go ahead and cover the remaining part of my canvas with this color. And then we will come back and, except for right there around the beach, I want to just kind of work that in there. I want it to stay light right there. So I'll just work this in because this will be an undercoat for our trees here. And that will be good. So our trees will have to be perfect here because our trees are going to be coming up and over and so I'm going to get this on make sure my canvas is covered good there might be a couple spots I have to come back and touch up on so I will do that and get it completely dry really work that in there Alright, I'm going to get this dry. Before it dries real quick though, let, let me do my, my beach. I'm going to do my light buttermilk and a tiny little bit of the green. And I'm going to work that right through here. I don't really know how much of that green we'll need, but I just want to make sure my beach stays a beach. Okay, I'm going to get it dry. We're going to come back and get going. Okay, I've marked out some little grid lines here. Kind of where I want to put some different land things going on. Uh, I think I want to put a little house here. And then these will be our upper trees. But I think right here, first thing I want to do is put a couple of um, uh, palm trees. <laughs> I couldn't think of what they were called. Right down there, kind of on the beach. So we're going to um, use our burnt umber and a little tiny bit of Hauser dark green in it, or leaf green, either one will be just fine. We just want to green up our, our burnt umber and not make it quite so burnt umber can be transparent. So we don't want it to be that. Now, in my picture, you can just barely see tops of some palm trees. But everywhere we went, they were always right along the beach. So we'll put a couple in down here, I think. So I'm just going to go into my burnt umber. I'm going to get the water out of my brush here. I'm just going to use a small round brush because these are going to be very small. Not very detailed. I'm going to go with the Hauser Dark Green because it is uh, going to darken that brown up just, just like I want. These are far away, so they don't have a lot of detail. So we can kind of decide which direction uh, a palm tree can go. And we'll just make 
the base of one there. And then we'll give it a friend over here, maybe coming this way. So two, two there together. And well, we might make just three of them right here. Kind of hanging out. And I might put one over here. Give it a little bend as well. And maybe one over here in this area. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little bit of that lighter green. I'm just going to go in my dirty brush here, work it onto my brush, and then we're going to put some, some little stuff coming off of this. Don't have to be exact about this and you know, worry about too much of it because, like I said, this is. This is in, this is far away. So you can just decide how your palm tree is going to go. Because we're not seeing detail here. We're just giving the look of some palm trees going on back here. More paint. Just I'm just kind of pulling some strokes out. Nothing. Nothing big going on here. They're all kind of leaning towards the towards the water there. And then when we come in and do our land, we can kind of set those palm trees a little bit more in there. That one's really got the leans. <clears throat> okay, let's work on some of our land, land masses here. So, like for some of these, I want to put like some, some rolling heels uh, kind of thing going on. So, I'm going to go with my little scruffy brush and get some burnt umber and a little bit of leaf green and maybe a lot of burnt umber and a lot of leaf green because I didn't have hardly nothing on my brush there and maybe make this one a little bit lighter section here just maybe it's grass growing in there I don't know things aren't too awful bright in my picture, but I'm kind of changing it up a little bit and not making it exactly like my picture. Just kind of tap some of that green in there. I'm going to take, oops, take my small little round brush that I was using over here for my pine trees and let me get some light buttermilk out. <coughs> I also want to put on my palette like teal mint, uh, maybe a little bit of autumn red. So we're just going to kind of mix up these colors. Autumn red I'll definitely use on the roof of the house. So um, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of different colors in here and. Kind of stroke them in there. I don't want. I don't want a bunch of detail. I don't want it to look like it's much of anything. So maybe tapping it in would be better because that won't give as much detail. And I just picked up a little bit of teal mint and a little bit of leaf green. And we'll just kind of put some of that in there. Ooh, a lot of it. Wow. That's what I get for looking away while I'm painting. Do not look away while you're painting. Big <laughs> mistake. 
Big mistake. Okay, so that's that little section right there and we can add another section just like that one somewhere else so let's say we want some more rolling heel type stuff in right here coming down to the water so we'll tap some of that mix in there which was uh, burnt umber and leaf green it staying a little bit more on the darker green side. I like that much better. Okay, and then we'll put some highlights in that with the teal mint and the leaf green. Or a lot of highlights in there. I'll tap some of this in, then I'll take my little scruffy brush and kind of blend it around. pretty good we got a couple like that let's <coughs> excuse me let's put a couple I'm gonna undercoat a little bit here let's say this one here I'm gonna get more burnt umber I think this section We can put some rocks up on here. I mean, you know, you can do a lot of things with this. So, maybe this one back here will be like that one. Just put some of that color back in there. And then we'll take some. Uh, let's get a little bit of camel out here. Okay, so for these two, and I'm probably will do a third one somewhere, maybe. Um, I, w I just want to put some flowers on there. So I'm going to take my burnt umber and mix a little bit of the autumn red with it. Kind of tone that red down. I don't want it to be quite so bright. I'll just tap some. It needs to be a little bit brighter. It's not showing up. So a little bit more red, maybe a little bit bigger dots. I don't know. Just make it look like a bunch of flowers is up here on this one. And we can kind of spread them out. They don't have to all be together. And we'll put some on this one. Okay. Might add a little bit of some camel ones in there. Mix a little bit of burnt umber with it to kind of tone it down. Not too much because you'll turn the yellow green. We don't want to do that, although green would be just fine. over here. Everything's very kind of toned down here because our focal point is our water. So in place of putting houses in here I'm doing different things with the land because this has just far too many houses in it. Far too many buildings. Yeah, just way too many. And I didn't want that. I, I, my focus wanted to be on the water. And the calming effect that, that water can have. Okay, um, so let's go to our next section. Okay, so this one here, I'm just going to glaze some of our green, house or green dark on it. Just glaze it right on there. Same. You can add a little bit of burnt umber in there if you want to. So 
I'm going to do the same over here. Oh, I think I want this one to have a little bit more burnt timber. Darken that green a little bit. And just glaze this one. I'm going to wipe my brush off so I can kind of let it fade away a little bit as it gets down here. I'm going to take my that mix and add a tiny little bit of leaf green to it. Well, that kind of that didn't really change the color too much. A little bit more leaf green and a little bit of camel. I think camel in there will be good. These places up here a little bit higher, so just tap it in there. Don't. This is stress free painting here. Grab a little bit more leaf green. Kind of brighten up just the scooch there. Fun, fun. So you're just going to pick and choose what um, little hills you want to do with what color. That's way too bright, so let me get some burnt umber in there. Way, 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 way too bright. I was trying to make that color up there and didn't quite to get it. And let's go with some Hauser Dark Green here. And a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to kind of let this fade away down here. Water. We do not want to see any of our lines for anything when we're done with this. We want this to all be blended together. No lines. No lines. I think I'm going to keep this one a little bit more on the burnt umber side here. Gonna let it fade away down in there. Make sure I don't have any lines. up a little green there, that's okay. I'm going to put the burnt umber on this one over here as well. And just kind of let it blend in there with whatever, whatever's on my brush. No worries. Okay, looking pretty good. This area right here where the house is going to be, let's add a little bit more green in there. Some more water on my brush. I'm going to remove some of the paint. A 
if you bring that green down here just a little bit. I'm going to take our beach away. So we kind of got some highs and lows going on here in our land. So I've got all of that how I want to do it. Um, so it was basically just taking your colors on your palette and blending and mixing them and putting them uh, in places to make interest in the piece. I think what I'm going to do now is glaze over the land with my hauser. I think it needs to get some fresh out here. Is my hauser dark green? Because I feel like it needs a little bit of cohesive color here. So we're just going to go over everything, even our flowers, just every place that we just painted in. We're just going to wash over it with our Hauser dark green. Now a wash, stay out of your water, a wash is nothing more than water with a little bit of our paint added to it to create a tinted water or colored water okay that looks that looks better I like that much better and I might not even put a house in there. I haven't decided. I think I might go over here and work on my tree stuff and then decide if I want to put a house in there. Okay, we've got our land mass done over here, so now we're going to work on our foreground stuff. This is where we can lighten up our colors and get a little bit brighter as we come to the tops of the trees up here. So I'm going to start by using a large uh, Filbert Rake brush. You can use any brand of brush that you like. Uh, as long as it's a rake brush, flat, filbert, it doesn't matter. The size uh, depends on what you like to work with. Um, this is a half inch royal. Uh, I do not remember where I got this. Probably got this at Michael's quite a long time ago. They don't sell as big a variety of brushes as they used to. So, you know, uh, this one more than likely won't be able to find at just a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby. Although maybe Hobby Lobby might have some similar. So let's go with our, our colors. We're going to have some leaf green and some teal mint. And we can put some turquoise blue out. Um, you could put some sapphire out if you want. These would all be good colors to bring some brightness start building our brightness up here and I want to start by just pulling some strokes of like grasses out here okay so I do want to start that with and when I use this I want to thin my paint down with some water so it will flow off my tips pretty easy easily so I'm going to start with this green which we're not going to see too much at first some grasses. Our grasses, whoo, our grasses can come up over wh where our beach is because we are up here looking down. So we can mix a little bit more water in with my paint. I always touch the tips to my paper towel before I come over here. Like I got a goober or something on there. Okay, let's get some. I need some more fine, fine stuff. I got my paint all mixed together in a big glob. I mean, they're all so close together. I'm having a hard time pulling just a little bit of one color out. So don't do what I do. Get a new piece of palette paper and work it out better. You're staying up on the tips of the brush when you do this to create these grasses. I'm going to go into a little bit of leaf green now, so I'm going to thin some of that down. Just kind of add it in. There we go. So 
Let's just kind of pull some out. Add some in. We're looking down. This is about the only leafy, grassy place in the picture that's got some tall grasses that we can see. And the teal mint's mixing in with the paint that's on my brush, so it's not going to be super bright. It's uh, it's going to stay a little bit. Ooh, that's a really thick piece there. I'm going to pull some kind of long ones up here if I can. Individual, stay up on the tip as much as you can to get them more individual pieces. Okay, so that's kind of our our one and only little grassy area through there. You could make this whole thing grass if you wanted to be standing on a grassy hill looking down. It's perfectly fine to do it that way. Don't don't feel like you know when you get over here to the trees you get a little bit uh, nervous about it. You can um, put in however you want. So now I'm going to take my uh, I have a large deer foot here. This is a low Cornell 3 8 inch deer foot, but they no longer make deer foot brushes. So any scruffy brush that you have, I'm just going to kind of, I got picked up some red there on my brush. I'm just going to kind of tap a little bit. Kind of down here at the base of this stuff, kind of set it in there. Okay, now for our some more Hauser Dark Green, some more Burnt Umber out. You can be cre as creative with your trees as you would like. So you can st start by just kind of tapping some undergrowth in here. Nothing serious about it, just pity pat it. Okay, and then we're going to put some tops of some trees on, or some branches for some trees. Okay, let's figure out where we want to put some tops of some trees. So, oh, got my paint. Way too much paint on my brush here. So we'll just pull up some, like, stems of some tops of some trees. And we want our trees to go over this kind of edge that we painted. So... There's still not a lot of detail here, so don't get carried away with details. Okay, that's just going to give us the, the uh, where we want to put some tops of our trees. So I'm going to start by tapping in a little bit of Hauser Dark Green is what I'm using first. I need to go down with that smaller brush for this. So I'm just kind of, those, those uh, things we stuck up there, just kind of guidelines. So don't, don't get caught up on, we're covering them all up. No! They're just guidelines. So I'm going to go into leaf green if I had some out. sapphire blue in with it and we'll just put some 
wider areas in here. So now I want to I want to start kind of making my trees different colors. I just don't want to see some of that dark undergrowth in there. <laughs> and these are beginning to look more like bushes than trees, so if they turn out to be more like bushes, so be it. You know, bushes growing on this little hillside, because that's exactly what they're turning out to be. Not looking so much like the tops of trees here. And that's the way it goes sometimes. So, I will just call these bushy areas. we want to add in here because after all it is the Bahamas so I'm just picking up some teal blue a little bit of sapphire blue might pick up some of my autumn red here mix some of that in I get some nice little color going on here I think I'm going to like the bushes a little bit better than the, the tree anyway. Paint out. But we want to keep with these more blue colors, so don't... Uh, these blues and reds, they're just... Get a little bit more red, a little brighter here in front. are up closer so we're going to try and, and define these a little bit more. Uh, I don't have any yellow so I'm going to get some camel and try and use that as my yellow. Wipe off some of that paint. I want to make it too muddy. I use it here. So I'm going to take some of my camel and we'll tap some yellow stuff going on here. Maybe tuck a little bit down in here. Just wherever you want to go. Go back into my red and make it a little bit more orangey. Some of this along here. So I think that's looking really nice. A little bit of red up in here. So just kind of tuck it in. I'm going to go back to some green now. Put some green in here. green. Maybe we'll put some of this over here as well. A little bit of blue over here, I think. Can I draw the blue from the ocean over to here? This is the turquoise blue. So, to just Pick your, pick your colors, you know, whatever you like, and put them in there. Because I'm really liking how this is turning out. A little bit of light buttermilk, I think, in here. And we'll put some lighter stuff in here. Ooh, too much paint there. touch a lot of the tops up here with some light buttermilk just to get us some brightness going on here I 
as it starts blending with your wet paint, just go pick up a little bit more. Okay, that might be just a touch too much buttermilk in there. So I'll take some of it back down with my colors. I'll go back into some of my reds. Red, kinda, I kind of lost my, my true red ones. That wasn't it. This was it. This was my more true red. orangey color. Right in here, up in here. And we'll tip our green ones back here a little bit. This is all just with this this uh, scruffy deer brush here. I didn't use any other brush but that little deer foot brush. So change the composition a little bit by adding the flower area here instead of the tops of the trees. And I think that looks really good. along this bottom edge. Kind of set that down just a, a tiny bit. Too much there. I didn't like it. Don't quite like the way it looks right there. A little bit more red. Brighten that up. on there. Okay, now you don't want to keep messing and playing with this because you're just going to turn it to mud. So I'm going to get out of it. I think it looks uh, pretty good. And I think this might be a pretty done piece here. I don't see anything that I need to touch up. A wide angle just a little bit. So you can see the whole thing. Yeah, I think that looks great. I love how the hills turned out. They look more rolling hills now. Um, our little lagoon with our boats in it, just beautiful. And even though it is completely taken away, this part up here, I love all these beautiful flowers. Everything in the Caribbean is bright and beautiful and catches your eye. And there is just so much going on. I might pull a few grasses up through here, um, maybe with some leaf green, maybe a tiny bit of a bit brighter, I think. It's not bright enough. Add some light buttermilk to my leaf green, kind of really lighten it up, and see if I can pull some some grasses in here. Ooh. Or a fat grass. Because I didn't pick out a um, super bright green. I kind of got to make my own here. Just add some white or light buttermilk to it. these in here. Just kind of look like there's some some 
loose grasses growing in there because I don't know about you but when I my flowers every year I just can't hardly keep the the grass from growing out of them even if I have that under growth pre preventer stuff in there it's supposed to prevent the grasses from coming through it doesn't work the best let's get some darker green in here Just a scooch. Put a few in here. How about a few over here? This is just Hauser Dark Green here now. I don't know how well my pictures are going to be cohesive with this project on this one because I kind of forgot to take a few pictures. So we're going to get what we get. shorter ones over here. Maybe a few coming out of here. I'm just using a small round brush here. Get a little bit of water. Okay, I think, that, I think that looks pretty good. I think I am going to call this project done. And this one has been just a wonderful trip down memory lane for me. I truly have enjoyed every minute of painting this. Even though I was away from it for over a week. And coming back to it, I mean... I, I just love how it turned out and I really really hope that you enjoyed painting it and create your own little version of what you have up here if you want bold bright flowers I mean to see actual flowers um, you can put those in um, whatever flowers hibiscus what I, I said it wrong hibiscus <laughs> or whatever that you would like but um, this is my trip down memory lane here, and I enjoyed it. So I, I hope that you paint it. I hope that you post your pictures. I hope that you love it as much as me. And um, thank you so much for painting with me. I'll see you guys on the next one.